Hey, what's up guys? John here. Americans are sitting on roughly $18 trillion in wealth. 40% of that wealth was acquired over the last three years. Think about this. 40% of all Americans' wealth was acquired over the last 36 months. Now, when we look at what's coming over 2024, you are going to see trillions and trillions of that perceived wealth vanish, just like that. We've seen a lot of last couple of years. Remember this? Because what I'm going to share with you is going to be even crazier than this. You remember this time, right? Free fries when you get... Um, I got... You're saying I could get this? You delicious fries? Wait a minute. But there's also a, a burger element to this? Yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting times, to say the least. Remember all of these different offers and... A lot of things back then, people would say, hey, that would never happen. You know, if someone were to tell you, hey, in five years, you know, 2018 or 2015, in five years from now, you're going to experience that. People would have said, no way, that's never going to happen. That's crazy. Well, look, 2024 and 2025 are going to make that look like a nothing burger. No pun intended, right? That's what's going to happen. We're walking into a situation where we're going to see so many people getting forced out of their homes and so many people are going to walk in buying up all these properties. They're going to walk into these chain of events prepared and start to acquire everything. That's what's going to happen. Look at this. Please hit the like button and hit the like button. YouTube will share this content to educate more people about what's going on in America's economy. And if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for this massive wealth transfer, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item under credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session. Take a look at this. So half of all mortgages originating 2020 or after in America. Think about that. Most U.S. mortgages are pandemic mortgages, more than half of them. So, sorry, Fed, most U.S. mortgages were locked in, right? This is from uh, Black Knight data as of January 2023. So, when you look at where the job market is right now, you're going to see very, very clearly people aren't going to be able to hold on to these mortgages. I don't care if they're 0.5%. If they're 1% mortgages, it's not going to matter. When you look at you know 2006 to 2008, Right inside of this 2009 era, this GFC, the Great Financial Crisis, you saw a pretty substantial drop in uh, uh, job openings, obviously. But look at what happened here during this period with all this QE, the quantitative easing, with record low interest rates. Everyone was making money left, right, and center. Stocks, crypto, real estate, house flipping, you name it, people are making money, right? Everything was great. A lot of people were even quitting their jobs, going getting a 20, 30% pay bump during the Great Resignation. Times are good. Well, during those good times, what did people do? Well, they acquired really nice cars. They got second homes. They bought Airbnbs. They invested, and they continued to invest. Then, out of nowhere, Jerome Powell started to increase interest rates, and that started to change the game a little bit. Now you're seeing a lot of employers trying to take some risk off the table. They're ending a lot of these jobs. They're reducing the amount of money they're willing to pay employees, yet the debts to service on all of these cars and these you know, Airbnbs, a lot of these credit card bills are getting more expensive and more challenging to service. So what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna start seeing more defaults. That's what's gonna happen. And when you look at this massive ticking time bomb that's coming to the job market, a $2 trillion corporate debt wall will spark job losses in 2024. Now, they say you know it's gonna be 5,000 jobs per month in 2024 and 10,000 jobs per month in 2025. I believe it's gonna be far greater than that. I believe it's going to be far, far, far greater than that. We're, the reason mainly being is because there's going to be generative AI and tech and people are going to be looking for ways in which they can kind of cut costs. They're going to start outsourcing more jobs because if the cost of living is as high as it is now and inflation continues to get worse and Americans have jobs or they're going to require jobs, they're going to be able to make themselves whole on their bills employers are simply going to look for ways in which they can cut costs. As interest rates rise and the cost of service loans for these businesses gets more and more and more expensive, what are they going to want to do? They're going to want to stay in business. And the only way in which they can do that is reducing their overall cost, meaning we're going to see more and more and more job losses all throughout the U.S. economy. And we're going to start seeing a lot of opportunity flow to other countries all around the world. I mean, that's what's happened the last couple of years. Everything is online now. It wasn't like that in 2017, 2018, 2019. It was not like that. 
now everything is turning into a global economy, which is not a really strong position if you are an American where you have very, very, very high cost of living and you need top, top dollar when you can, you know, your job can be outsourced. We're gonna to start to see a lot more of this job outsourcing start to unfold. But I saw something very, very interesting here and it, it kind of connects the dots perfectly as to what's gonna happen next. So according to a widely circulated San Francisco Fed study, last month, U.S. households will deplete their 2.1 trillion in excess savings accumulated during the pandemic this quarter. Well, this came out September 22nd, right? So this quarter is basically now. Now, when you look at this, 75% of U.S. homes, of homes currently on the market, are out of reach for those in the middle class. So very interesting to look at this. If most people have their wealth tied up in their homes that they acquired right around this period, right during you know, every, all the you know, madness in 2020, all through here, and half of these mortgages are 2 3% mortgages, and you have 75% of homes on the market out of reach for the middle class, well, how are they going to be able to sell these homes? Now, you might say, John, they're not going to sell their homes. They're not going to sell their homes. Well, look at this. Morgan Stanley, the housing market is crazy expensive, but an improvement in affordability that we have only seen a handful of times over the past 35 years is coming, says Morgan Stanley. Well, in what housing market, healthy housing market, do you ever see home inventory increasing during Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's times? You never do. Look, 2016, walking into November, December, home inventory is going down, right? November, December, home inventory is going down. When you walk into the summer months, home inventory is going up, and then it's going down. But why are we now seeing home inventory going up during the holiday season? Well, it's because people are getting pushed to the brink. That's what's happening. They're getting pushed out of these homes. And so the big question is, when you look at the average home price of $430,000 in America, and then you realize that in 2007, right before the great financial crisis, the average home price in America was about 257,000. How do home prices nearly double, almost double, but yet real wages are almost the same? Right, we have to, we have to wonder, is it a big bubble? Are we walking into something really big? Well, let's look at this. If you have an average credit score in America, which is a 698, you're looking at about a 7.896% 30 year fixed. If you have a 700 credit score, it's about 700, 7.5%. Now. On a average home price in America, 430,000 with 6% down, which is the average down payment for a first time home buyer with a 7% mortgage rate, 30 year fixed, you're looking at $3,500 per month. Is that crazy or is, this just, is that just me? $3,500 a month when you could rent right now, the average rental in America is 1967. So you would essentially have to opt in to paying, tw paying twice what you would pay otherwise in rent. Because when you rent, you don't have to pay for insurance, you don't have to pay for landscaping, upkeep, repairs, you don't have to pay for that stuff. Landlord covers it, right? So you would basically opt in to pay almost twice. How many renters are gonna be looking to do that in an economy that the job market's you know, going down? Probably not as many. And so when you see home inventory picking up in December, you have to ask yourself, are you gonna see a situation where home inventory is about to skyrocket in Q1 and Q2 of 2024. Now, I personally believe yes, and this is one of the reasons why. So when you look at 60% of, only 60% of student loan borrowers made their payments, meaning 40% did not, average student loan payment, you're talking $503 a month. Like it's a substantial payment, it's almost like a car payment, right? When you have 40% of people that are not making these payments, and most college educated people are, you know, they, they are home buyers or they plan to be home buyers. Well, when you have a late payment on your credit report, well, one late payment also, after 90 days, student loan payments goes on your credit report as a late payment. After uh, that 90 day window, it can drop your credit score upwards of 180 points. On average, it's somewhere around 80 to 100 points is what we see, but upwards of 180 points. So if you had an 800 credit score and you miss one of these payments, you go to 700, you might go to 650, right? Like it's, it's substantial if you miss one of these payments. And so when you have, you know, millions and millions and millions and millions of Americans that are gonna to start to see this hit the report, come January, what's gonna happen? These Americans are not gonna be able to refinance as easily, they're not gonna be able to get home equity lines of credit, they're not gonna be able to, you know, get access to liquidity like they were able to a couple of years ago. So a lot of these people are gonna be forced to sell if they cannot comfortably afford to pay those payments. It's gonna be a very, very interesting dynamic. Now, when you look at what happened, you know, credit scores went up during the pandemic. Now more borrowers are slipping. They can't afford their bills. In 2008, this is New York Times, US Bank's tight lending standards, January 7, 2008, it says, borrowers with clean credit histories will still find themselves 
fund lenders willing to push money their way. But the easy money that kept the economy rolling in recent years has dried up as banks hobbied with U.S. subprime mortgage debacle scramble to shore up balance sheets. This is what's going to happen. A lot of people are going to have a harder time getting access to money. And as the job market's changing, everything with it is going to change. All these assets are going to come on the market for sale. Now, I found something very interesting around you know, credit cards and lines of credit because this is so important for the everyday American middle class. The default rate on a credit card with a borrower between 300 and 600 credit score is 8.9%. So if you look at what the default rate is for someone with a 661 credit score to a 780 credit score, it's 0.1% as of July, 2023. So a credit card company is 89 times more likely to have a borrower not pay if their credit score is between 300 and 600. So you have to ask yourself, if during 2008, they cut access to credit to people with bad credit due to subprime, what's gonna happen going forward? The same exact thing, banks lend money into existence. They're gonna lend money to their private equity firms, the institutions, those perfect credit score borrowers, the people with good credit, talking 750, 760, 770 and above. Those are the people that are gonna be able to get access to liquidity. And when you look at you know, some of these policies, they're forcing credit card companies to start to get very restrictive. They're trying to bring late payment, their late fees, to $8. From when before it was you know, between $25 and $40, reducing the profit that credit card companies will receive upwards of 75% on late payments, right? So this is a significant, significant loss. If you're a credit card company and you're seeing you know, 8.9%, almost you know, 11, one out of 11 not paying, and the average balance in America is right now $6,000 and, and they're only you know, paying an $8 fee, would you lend money to them? Probably not, right? You probably would not do that. And when you see how desperate consumers are getting, buy, na buy now, pay later, this is going all the way back to 2024, and we're walking in right now to December, this is gonna pick up dramatically in January and February. I can almost guarantee you we're gonna, we're gonna break through these, uh, these uh, levels and we're gonna hit all-time highs in January. Now, when you look at what homeowners are going through right now, it's, it's really, it's so fascinating because home insurance prices increased nearly 25%, right? Home insurance prices increased 21% just from May 2022 and May 2023, inside of a year. And when you have car insurance going up, car insurance rates had their biggest annual jump in 47 years. And you start to look at this, you have to ask yourself, how are people going to be able to hold on as the job market starts to fade? How? They're not. They're not. And you remember what happened in, you know, a couple of years ago? It was the small businesses that got impacted. It was the everyday American that got impacted. It wasn't the ones that were, you know, had everything in line. It wasn't the Walmarts of the world. It wasn't the, you know, the McDonald's, right? They were deemed right, the essential. They were deemed essential. I believe what's going to happen when we see this great transfer of assets is we are going to see corporations be the ones that are responsible for providing affordable housing, the ones that are providing, you know, that are there to combat inequality. It's going to be all, all the wealth from the middle class, a lot of it, is going to be pushed to large corporations and large companies to be the gatekeepers of combating inequality. That's what's going to happen. So if you are somebody that's looking out in the world, and you realize we are in a massive bubble. We are in a huge rug pull that's about to hit this American economy like a wrecking ball. Put yourself in the best position possible. If you have a great job, keep it. Really overperform for your boss and for your company. Provide a ton of value. Make yourself irreplaceable. If you are an entrepreneur, reduce expenses as much as you possibly can and grow cash flows as much as you can. Take care of your customer. Do everything you could possibly do to really dominate. If you have high interest rate consumer credit card debt, do a balance transfer if you have a credit score that will allow you to do that. Put yourself in a position to where you're not paying somebody else 30% interest. Make smart decisions now. Position yourself. I'm telling you, this wealth transfer is going to make 2008 look like a cakewalk. It's going to make that look like nothing. We're walking into something huge here. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in your credit report, square it away now. Put yourself in a position to where you can get funding, where you can invest, and where you can make really big moves. Because the next couple of years, I believe, are going to be more important to build wealth than any other time in American history. Drop below, hit the like button, and uh, if you like to schedule a free strategy session, we'd love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. You can click the link in the description just below this video. Catch you in the next video.